In this video, we're going to take a look at step 9 of the Cheat Engine built-in tutorial, which looks at shared code. This episode is going to build upon what we did in part 7 of the tutorial, which was code injection, so if any of this video doesn't make sense to you, you can go back and check those videos. So I have part 9 of the tutorial open, and it describes a problem that we came across whenever we were looking at the code injection tutorial. If you remember whenever we looked at Cave Crawler, we were able to inject some code to say that Whenever we take damage, it should actually not take any damage at all, or it should give us health for taking damage. The problem is, whenever we injected that code, it also affected the enemy player, so we were able to toggle it on and off, and say we want our player to be invincible, but every time we toggled it on, the enemies became invincible as well, and we basically had to wait until they turn around, we would toggle it off, kill them, and then turn our invincibility back on. And the reason for this, as the tutorial name indicates, is because the objects are using shared code. So I'm going to open up a class diagram here. This is basically an example from a game. So if you were designing your own game and you wanted to program it, if you're using object-oriented programming, as they generally will be, you'll create classes to represent objects. So you'll have a class like this, character, and every time you want to create a character, you'll create an instance of this class, which will be called an object. And that object will have various fields. So you can see here it'll have a name, which is of type string, It'll have some other values, for example, is it friendly, yes or no, so that's a boolean value. And it'll also have functions as well, so you can see there's actually code within this class which will allow you to manipulate any objects that are created from the class. And that would be in terms of moving, so whenever you move the object, there's code in here to do that. And attacking and dying, these are shared characteristics of characters. So you have this base class, and then you'll have other classes which extend that. So you can see here you have a player, you have NPS, you have quests, the quest is part of the player here, so the three things which we have are part of the character are the MPS, which will be the non-player characters, I'm not sure actually what the S is for, non-player something or other, but you can see here it has like trade, talk, hire, accept quest, complete quest. And then you have monsters as well and our player. So these are basically all different characters within the game. But monsters will have some of their own properties, like the monster race and the rank, and our own player will have its own properties, for example, the list of quests. Obviously, monsters don't have quests, so there's no reason for them to have that property. And then the same goes for functions as well. So we've got functions like pick up gold, pick up item, but a monster's not going to do that. They're just going to drop an item whenever you kill them. So that function, that code, only needs to be part of the monster object. But some of the functions and some of the properties will be shared. So the character has these base properties, these base functions, which means the function for moving and the function for attacking is exactly the same code that's being used regardless of these extended classes. So whether it's an MPS or it's a player or it's a monster, they're all going to use that same code from the base class to attack, to move, and then they're also going to have these things like the health, movement speed. So these are going to be linked between the enemy players and our own player. Hopefully that makes sense. I've tried to simplify that as much as possible because I know this isn't easy. If you don't have any prior programming experience, then a lot of that will be quite confusing. So I'll not complicate it too much or spend too much time with this bright screen because I know that it's going to make my face really bright. And let's go back to the tutorial. So the goal of this challenge is similar to part seven, the code injection one, where we want to make our player invincible, but we want to make sure that enemy players aren't invincible at the same time. So we've got two teams player 1, player 2 on one team, and then player 3 and player 4. And we can give them all damage, so we can click attack and they'll take some damage. And we want to try and inject some code to say that whenever we take damage, nothing happens, but whenever the enemy players take damage, they take damage as normal. And once we get that working, we will make sure we don't freeze our health. So in our multi-level pointers episode in the previous video, we had to freeze our health to 5,000 and then change the pointer. In this case, we're not going to do that but we're going to set restart game and autoplay. And that's basically going to go through and hopefully take all the damage off the enemy players without taking any damage off of us. So we'll instantly win the game. And we're doing that without having to find any pointers or anything like that, because we're actually injecting code to change the functionality of the game. So as usual, we want to start off by attaching the cheat engine to the correct process, which is the tutorial. And we want to try and find our value here for one of the health values. I'm going to start with Dave, but you could start with another player on either team. I'm going to start with Dave. It's at 94. I actually meant to do 100 to begin with, but that's fine. We can start at 94. We do find, and then we'll do some damage again. So now it's 90. So the next value is 90. 
and we don't actually get any results. So what we want to do here, which we've not had to do previously, is actually play around with this value. So we can try and change it to float, and let's say then the initial value is 90. First scan will take some damage, now we'll change it to 86, and then next scan, and now we've found our health. So it's actually a float value this time, and actually if you scroll down it does tell us that as a tip, and it also tells us there are multiple solutions. Alright, so we've got our health, let me change that, I'll change that to health, you could make it player 1 health or something as well. I'm going to right click it and say find out what writes to this address, we'll attach the debugger, we will take some more damage and we'll see that we get this one instruction. So we can go and have a look and see what the registers are set to, we've been doing this whenever we're trying to identify pointers and things like that. But in this case we want to show this in the disassembler and bring up this assembly code, so this is a code that's being executed and this is the instruction that we're currently on. What we want to do is right click this and say find out what accesses, no find out what addresses this instruction accesses. What we basically want to know is we know that this instruction is right into our player whenever our player takes damage but we also know it's shared with other players code so we want to, if I take some more damage here on our player you'll see we've got two counts there now but we want to see what else is using this code, what is sharing this code and we can take some damage with Eric and we'll see, okay, Eric is this address here, so it's a different address, but it's accessing this instruction. And then we can do that with Hal, and then we can do that with the KI, I can't see the full name. But we do that, we get four results now, and we have two which are on our team and two on the enemy team. And this is where we can look for commonalities. So what we can do is select these two which are in group one, so they're on our team. And then we can right click it, we can say find commonalities, and then we want to mark this as group one. And then we'll do the same, but for group 2, find commonalities, mark as group 2. And now we're basically saying that what we want to do is, if we now go to find commonalities, and then say scan for commonalities, it brings up some registers. So we have our registers here, and we can see that some of them we have to double click to launch the structure, but three of them have this common value. And what it's saying here is that the RDX group 2 always has this common value of 0x1. So what that means is every time a player from group 2 takes damage, the RDX and the RSI both have 0x1 in them. But whenever our players take damage, the RDX and the RSI don't have 0x1 in them. So I don't know what values they do have, but we basically know that every time group 2 takes damage, there is some commonality, there's some value that's always constantly the same for the enemy players, and then it's different for us. You can see that's the same with RAX as well, so we could use one of these. We could also select another one, so for example RCX, if we double click it, we can do a scan here, and you can enable this to find matching groups only, which will basically say that both players on Team 1 should have the same value, and both players on Team 2 should have the same value. So it should bring up less results and be more reliable, but if you don't get any results, you might need to untick that. And we can do a scan, we'll just save this anywhere. Runs through a scan, and we do get a lot of results. I'm going to start off at the top here, so we've got this offset of 0, and what it's telling us is that our group 1 always has a 1 in it at this offset of 14, and the group 2 always has a 2 in it at this offset of 14. Now it might be that some of these work all the time while others don't, so you can see there's other examples down here, for example, our players always have a value of 1 at this offset, but there's two offsets in this case, so you'd have to take care of both of those offsets, so you can just do one that has a single offset, you can see this is 14, then these are blank, that's better, or it should be better, but you could use some other ones, so these might work as well, these have always got a 1 in at this offset, 60, and then offset 1, B14, and the enemy players always have a zero. So we'll go with this one anyway, we'll say this is a RCX, so RCX plus 14, at that point whenever we take damage that value should always be 1, and whenever the enemies take damage that value should always be 2. So we basically want to set up a condition and say before you take damage from the player, first have a look and see what's at this offset, because if it's a 1, we don't want you to take damage because that's our player. If it's a 2, it's an enemy player and you should just take damage as normal. Alright, hopefully that makes sense, let me close this down, and we're going to go and inject some code here, so as we've done previously, we'll right click this, and well, you can, you can do this a few ways, I'm going to do Alt, uh, Control and A to auto assemble, because that's the quickest way to bring this up, and we also want to do cheat table framework code first, before we do 
code injection. You can go back and check the earlier tutorials if you want to find out more about that. But basically, because we want to save it as the cheat table, we will do those two options in that order. And this brings up, so this is the original code which is occurring. That's the code that we've just selected the to patch, basically. We want to inject our code here. We have some memory which is declared up here, which is actually injected in so that we can put our own code here. And this is where it's telling us to place our own code. So what happens normally is whenever one of these buttons is clicked, this is going to take some damage. And what we want to say is actually, we want you to do a comparison first. We want you to compare what's in the RCX plus 14. And we want you to compare that to one. You could say we want you to compare it to two. And if they equal, you want to go to the original code, or you can do it the other way around and say compare it to one. And if they equal, you want it to just exit. So we can say compare one to the RCX plus 14. That was the offset that we just saw. And if they equal, we want you to jump. So jump if equal, JE. We want you to jump to exit. And that's just going to jump to return here. So JE exit. And then we can save this. I'm going to assign to current cheat table. I'm going to close that down. Let me close this as well. All right, so we've got this auto assemble script. Let's try and take some damage. It's taking damage as normal. Let's take this box, take some more damage. It's not taking damage. What about the enemy player? They are taking damage. So that's working. We can also actually, what we could do here, let me find out what writes this address again. If we now try and take some damage, we won't see any write because it's not performing that write because we've got this toggled on. So I'm going to toggle that off and I'm going to do that again. Attack. There we go. We've got a write operation. We can go into the disassembler. I just want to just show that whenever we open this up in the disassembler, if we now go and toggle this on and off, we can actually see this is changing the code. So whenever it's toggled on, it just looks as normal. It performs this move operation. If we have it toggled on, I think I just got that the wrong way around. If it's toggled off, it has the original code. If we toggle it on, it's going to jump down to FFF000. And this is basically where it's placed our code. I don't know. Can I follow that? If I follow that, you can see this is the comparison that's doing. So this is the code that we injected to say, compare what's in the RCX plus 14 at this offset with a one. And then if they equal, it's going to jump down to exit. Otherwise, it's going to take the damage as normal. All right, so that means we can now restart game and autoplay. And there you go. The enemy players are dead. It didn't take any damage off of us because of the code that we injected. There is actually an older method of doing this where you can scan structures, which is in the official cheat engine video, which I watched for this. I'm not going to go through that because I don't want to confuse things too much. I noticed in the comments, a lot of people were kind of saying, you know, all the videos up until then were easy and then suddenly it got really hard. So I don't want to make this too confusing. What I will say is in the next video, we're going to apply this technique to code crawler and make sure that we can make our player invincible while we can still kill the enemy players. And whenever I did that, I didn't actually use the find commonalities. So first we'll solve it without using find commonalities and then we'll solve it with the commonalities option. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that video next week. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. As ever, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.